Good afternoon. Those of us who've read uh, Shakespeare or who have studied uh, the history of England will be familiar with the story of King Henry V. I'm going to narrate a, a brief event from his life. The King Henry V and, and 6,000 of his soldiers uh, were in France fighting. This was part of the Hundred Year War between England and France. And uh, the soldiers, all these men had been marching continuously for two weeks. They were all tired, hungry, sick, they didn't have enough weapons and they faced a French army that was uh, well rested, well equipped, they were also confident and mainly they outnumbered the English by five to one. And one English general, he said, oh, if we had a few more men on our side, and the king hears this and he says, no, don't wish for one man more because the fewer we are, the greater each person's share of the glory. And we will all remember this day very proudly. We will show our scars to our children and grandchildren when we tell them about this day. And he motivates all his men. He speaks to them so enthusiastically. He says, today we are, a, we are all brothers and we band of brothers will win today. And actually, they go on to win. Nobody expected this. The French did not expect this. The English did, themselves did not expect this. And then they go on to win. And this speech, uh, the speech at uh, the Battle of Agincourt, was uh, immortalized by Shakespeare in his play, King Henry V. And this is something that we teach, this play, in our schools and colleges in different countries where uh, English languages start. Why do we actually teach this though? Why do we teach Shakespeare today? It's not to learn English, it's not to teach English. We don't speak that English anymore, not in England, not anywhere in the world. It is taught in schools, in colleges, but not just that. It is even taught in military academies where soldiers are trained in leadership. The speech was played on allied ships when they were crossing to land in Normandy during Second World War. The same speech is played by, uh, in the locker uh, rooms by, by football coaches when it looks like uh, the team is about to lose during halftime. And uh, it's actually used as a case study in MBA in, in American universities. The same speech is actually used in, ex uh, in, in training executives in companies because this shows the power of the human subjective emotional factor in determining the results. When I am emotionally invested in something, I work in a way that I, I simply cannot when I'm not interested in this. And uh, this is something that is known by, by all sports people, by all athletes. The way they feel when they are about to start the race or start the game determines the result. Every army general knows this. Tolstoy called it the spirit of the army. And uh, this is... Uh, something that is taught, that can be taught even to the students when we teach them Shakespeare, when we teach them any story, the power of the subjective, that the numbers do not matter. It does not matter that they outnumber us five to one. We are so few in number. And uh, this idea that the numbers do not matter, we see again in daily life. Uh, if you even take the example of the tech giant Apple, it, it, in the mid-90s, it looked like uh, the company was failing. All the industry experts said, no, the company has no future. The media had written it off. Even all the rival companies, they were all uh, very certain. The, the CEO of uh, Dell Computers, he said, I have a piece of advice. It is better that the board uh, liquidates the stocks, repay all the shareholders, and, and they close down the company because there is no other future. But they did not take into account the creative genius of the, the CEO of, of Steve Jobs who, who's, who realized that actually people are still scared of the machine. They think, oh, the machine will rule us. And he was able to package, to image the computer in such a way that he was able to tell them, this is only a tool to serve you. And that turned around the company. He was able to do it because he understood, he, he understood that the, the numbers on the balance sheet actually do not matter. He understood the psychology of the people. This is exactly what King Henry V also understood. And if we can show the students, what you are learning in a story, in a play of Shakespeare, can be applied in anything, even in a company if you work. When we were able to show them this, the, the, the power of the idea, 
the, the king when he speaks to his soldiers he says uh, today we are all brothers in a society that is so steeped in class consciousness when he says every one of you soldiers my is my brother how will a soldier fight when he believes that he's fighting for his, for, for his salary and how does he fight when he believes that uh, he is fighting for his brothers or his family throne it it makes a difference and he was able to understand the same psychology and the power of the idea that comes out in this this has been applied successfully throughout history we see uh, mahatma gandhi when he said uh, when he told all the indians let us all make salt what he said he was trying to get independence for the country from a colonial power and and a salt tax had been imposed so what did gandhi say he said uh, let us all go to the sea coast we have a 7000 km sea coast in india let us all go and let us all make salt and this symbol act this this symbolic act was able to actually uh, gather all this this aspiration for freedom and make it one force that acted against uh, the rulers and it got india independence the same idea that martin luther king junior he applied when he said uh, let us all boycott the government buses and just walk that was a simple idea one man one idea and with this he was able to inspire the country he got attention from the whole world and he was able to um, implement uh, make legislation possible that ended uh, racial segregation in the country the act what he started may still not be over but he was able to create a revolution one person one idea the same thing that we see in the pakistani girl malala who said i am going to school that is all she said and she created a movement and 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 uh, greta thunberg she said just the opposite she said i am not going to school and she asked everybody else to join in and this one person one idea and the power that it has to create a revolution this we can see we can show the students that the same idea is there even in uh, this play by uh, shakespeare so i just used this play as an illustration to illustrate this point that you can take any story you can take any work of literature you can take any subject and from this it is possible to derive the essence of knowledge of accomplishment that can be transferred that can be applied in any field by anybody and uh, because isn't that what we trying to create people who can think across disciplines if you look at any problem that we have today it is created because uh, we did not think outside our boundary in india we have so many engineering colleges that produce thousands of engineers who are so good at their work at say civil construction at constructing dams and they they they, they can make these perfect plans without a thought to the, the the lands that will be flooded the villages that will have to be evacuated the people who are connected to emotionally connected to these places and to the livelihoods that are based on these regions without a thought they can create perfect plans in our engineering colleges so in order to prevent this when we can show students how one subject relates to everything else the knowledge that we get can be transferred in any field that we work we create people who can think in an integrated way